<laughs> so, um, I'm just going to speak about uh, course formats, different course formats. Um, first of all, just give a few examples of different formats and then talk briefly about why we would format a course and the things that we uh, might consider when formatting a course. Um, and then some other ideas that we had specifically about widening participation and the tools that you can use. Um, so first of all, uh, uh, speaking from my own experience, we have three different offerings in our permaculture program. One is a one-day taster, which we run uh, in a city. So it's designed as a very low cost, low commitment, uh, short uh, course to attract people that live in the city that maybe don't know anything about permaculture and want to uh, just dip their toe in. And we give people an incentive that they have that, then that cost comes off the a main course if they book a bigger course with us. So it's kind of trying to entice people down into the country and away from the city by giving them that taste. Um, we then offer an accredited course, which uh, does two or three different things. Basically, it's designed to attract uh, a niche a smaller market of local uh, unemployed Irish people who may get funded to do this course because it's accredited. It's also designed to attract people who prefer to, um, to work themselves, so um, uh, learner-driven education, basically, because the weekends are spread out over two months. So um, that's aimed at people in Ireland um, and then we have a 10-day intensive, the third course, which is in the summer. So again, that's a different group um, of people. That's people who are often at a crossroads in their lives, changing careers, changing uh, or just finished college, looking for what they're going to do. And that's a very intense course. Um, and it is it attracts people from all over the world. So that's designed for a much wider market. So. Uh, we were looking at, you know, why would somebody want to format a course? So I guess the reasons for formatting a course would be um, because you want to reach everybody in your market. So uh, first of all, you have to know your market and you have to know who those people are, what their needs are, and really do an assessment of those needs. And those needs would include things like... Uh, people, what can they afford? How much time do they have? What's their preferred style of learning? Um, and where are they based? Where are they coming from? How do they get to you? So all those things you take into account when you're formatting a course. Um, we'd also look at motivation. So a lot of the time, I think, um, the people that do our August course are really just looking for a course in August. And they would travel anywhere in the world. But, you know, they find a course in August. They go to Ireland. So it's kind of understanding who you're attracting and what motivates them. Um, we looked at uh, the more specific uh, markets that we're perhaps not attracting in Ireland at the moment and how uh, we might link in with those people and talked about linking in with um, uh, other NGOs, uh, Pablo talked about, in Spain, linking in with food banks, where people go um, already who are disenfranchised and unemployed, and uh, you know, linking in with those groups who have the experience of dealing with those minority groups and teaching with them. Uh, and we would do the same in Ireland with a group called Volunteer Services International who bring young people into the eco-village. So it's about making alliances and partnerships with other groups and NGOs that already deal with those minority groups that are very hard to reach and teaching with them, partnering up with them. Um, the other thing that we have to consider just finally when trying to reach those groups of people, the hard to reach groups, is the terminology that we use. So a lot of people wouldn't understand the word permaculture and they would switch off when they hear it. So how do we present what the information that we want to give in our course or what we're actually trying to teach them uh, 
what terminology, what language are we using, and be very careful about that. Thank you. Thank you.